Mr. Bloor? Yes? The bathroom's yours. Do you think they're done? Done enough for them. Ow! Ethel. Don't stand there gawking. Get them up. Did you wash the floor this morning? Do you suppose I have time for everything? It's not right to go inviting a house full of guests. I'll talk to Mr. Owen when he comes. You tell him we're quitting. The agency didn't tell us the house was so big and so lonely. You knew it was an island. <laughs> With only one house. Makes me nervous. Here! What they don't know won't hurt him. If anyone has to eat a pick of dirt before he dies. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I propose a toast to our gracious hostess, Mrs. Owen. Ah, uh -uh, doctor, I saw you. You drank water. It's bad luck. Water never hurt anyone, sir. Especially in my profession. Don't forget the old proverb, Doctor. Never trust a man who doesn't drink. <laughs> Sounds like the Bible. <laughs> Great book. And now I give you our charming host, Mr. Owen. Jolly good fellow. And I hope, sir, that will conclude all possible toasts. <clears throat> Tell me, Miss Claythorne, why do they call this place Indian Island? I don't know. Uh, excuse me, sir. The boatman told me it's because it's shaped like the head of an Indian. Oh, oh that accounts for the little Indians. Indians! We are not out of toast, sir. I drink to the Indians, each little Indian individually. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten little Indians. Ten little Indians. It's like the nursery rhyme. Ten little Indian boys went out to dine. One choked his little self and then there were nine. Oh, poor little fellow. Here's to him. And what happened to the others? Nine little Indian boys sat up very late. One overslept himself, and then there were eight. Then what happened? You'll find the rhymes on the piano. Mr. Owen seems to be fond of little Indians. Eight little Indian boys traveling in Devon. One said he'd stay right there, and then there were seven. Seven little Indian boys chopping up some sticks Till one chopped himself in half and then there were six Six little Indian boys playing with a hive A bumblebee stung one of them and then there were five Five little Indian boys going in for law now one got enchantery, and then there were four. Four little Indian boys going out to sea. A red herring swallowed one, and then there were three. Three little Indian boys walking in the snow. A big bear hugged one, and then there were two. For nursery rhymes is in the nursery. Don't worry, Judge. He's down to the last Indian. Two little Indian boys sitting in the sun. One got all frizzled up, and then there was one. One little Indian boy left all alone. So he went and hanged himself, and then. Silence, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Mr. Owen, speaking. You are charged with the following crimes. General Sir John Mandrake, that you did deliberately send your wife's lover, Lieutenant Arthur Macefield, to his death. Emily Brent, that you did cause and bring about the death of your young nephew, Peter Brent. Dr. 
Edward G. Armstrong that through uncontrolled drunkenness you did kill Mrs. Mary Cleese, Prince Nikita Stala, that you were guilty of the murder of Fred and Lucy Marlowe, Vera Claythorne, that you did murder your sister's fiancé, Richard Barclay, Judge Francis J. Quinn Cannon, that you were responsible for the death by hanging of one Edward Seaton, Philip Lombard, that you were guilty of the death of 21 men, members of an East African tribe, William H. Bloor, that by perjuring your testimony, you did bring about the death of James Landor, Thomas and Ethel Rogers, that you brought about the death of your invalid employer, Mrs. Jennifer Brady. <coughs> Prisoners at the Bar of Justice, have you anything to say in your defense? Silence, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Mr. Up What's going on here? What kind of a practical joke is this? It's on the record. An outrageous lie. It's called Swan Song. May I ask who put this on the gramophone? I did, sir. Why? I didn't know what it was. On my oath, I didn't know. I, I was just obeying orders, sir, that's all. Whose orders? Mr. Owens? Now, let's get this quite clear. Mr. Owens' orders were what exactly? To put the record on at, at nine o'clock. It was sealed up. I, I, I thought it was just a piece of music. It's the truth, sir. I haven't seen Mr. Owen. I was telling my wife. I told you we shouldn't have come here. I want to get away. I won't touch that money. Shut up. <sighs> First thing to do, Rogers, is to get your wife to bed. May I have your attention, please? This letter to Rogers is signed by Mr. U.N. Owen. I must confess I don't know Mr. Owen personally. What kind of a man is he? Who knows him? <laughs> you all come to a house and you don't know the host. What about yourself, Your Highness? Oh, with me it's different. I am a professional guest. I knew we shouldn't have come here. Quiet, Ethel. I knew somebody would find out about it someday. I told you. Shut up, I tell you. <gasps> oh, she's quite out of her head, Doctor. Uh, hysteria induced by shock. Uh, give her this sedative. Ten drops and half a glass of water. Yes, sir. She doesn't sleep, repeat the dose in two hours. Oh, I, uh, I hope she'll sleep, Doctor. Uh, Doctor Armstrong, we've taken all the evidence except your own. Well, what's your reason for being here? Well, uh, quite frankly, I came here professionally. Uh, I received a letter from Mr. Owen asking me to come here and spend the weekend.